Hello, how are you doing? Uh, I'm still waking up a bit, um, so I've got a big mug of tea uh, to, to drink uh, while talking about all of these books that I'm really excited about reading. Uh, so this past week in England was Independent Bookshop Week, uh, which gave me an excuse to go out to some bookshops and buy some books. I mean, always happy to have an excuse to, to do that. And, uh, and I also have a number of books that publishers have kindly sent me. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go through all of these new titles. Uh, so first off, there is Panenka by Ronan Hessian. And uh, so this, the portrait on the cover of this book sort of looks like how I feel when I wake up in the morning, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but Ronan Hessian, uh, I adored his novel Leonard and Hungry Paul. Um, he has such a quiet, beautiful style of writing that's that's quite distinct. And, uh, and so I'm really excited to read this new novel by him, which is about a man named Panenka who's 50 years old and has lived with a lot of regrets throughout his life. Um, he's a former footballer and he has an estranged daughter who he's trying to uh, rebuild a connection with. And he meets a woman who similarly Generally has a lot of regrets in her life and so I think it's about their connection with each other and uh, and trying to move forward in in their lives and I love that uh, Ronan Hessian has been doing uh, these chats and interviews with uh, Sean the book maniac on his booktube channel so I'd really recommend uh, checking those out because uh, Ronan is also a fantastic reader as well um, so I follow him on social media he always gives really great book recommendations and is you know a really involved engaged reader who finds um, very distinct uh, uh, new books, um, some of which I've not heard of before. So, um, so yeah, I really enjoy getting his book recommendations as well as reading uh, his novel, this novel himself. Um, even though it's about a football player, and I'm really not that interested in football. I mean, especially since uh, the Euro Championship has been going on, and uh, and I actually have watched a couple of football games from this Euro Championship. Usually I refuse to watch it at all, but I was at um, a friend's the other day and they wanted to watch it. And so I sat down and watched it too. And so yeah, I'm sort of getting drawn into watching football and still not really enjoying it. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in reading this book, um, which I've been told, even if you're not interested in football, it's still really good. <laughs> the Hummingbird by Sandro Veronese, and it's translated from the Italian by Elena Pala. This is the story of a man that's born with a condition that uh, inhibits his physical growth um, so he still remains quite diminutive and small and so he's sort of given the name of hummingbird um, but he's able to maintain this incredible tranquility in his personality in his life even though uh, lots of dramatic things are happening all around him and so it follows the story of his life and it's it's, uh, it's meant to be like a, a family saga and uh, I'm always like drawn into the story of like a family saga and stories that that follow people over the the long course of their life and uh, so yeah I just love the sound of this story and uh, and I've heard really great things about it so I'm very much looking forward to reading this. Now I believe in July there's a Jane Austen readathon going on here on YouTube and uh, so a really curious new book uh, that's that's just come out and that I think uh, would be a really interesting companion to reading uh, Jane Austen's novels is this book uh, called uh, J Martha Lloyd's House Book um, from Jane Austen's Kitchen. So Martha Lloyd was a woman that was a friend of Jane Austen ever since her childhood and uh, lived with Jane Austen and her sister and their mother um, for a long period of time and uh, worked as a cook for them. And so this is a reproduction of her actual cookbook. And uh, some of these recipes uh, obviously inspired Jane Austen because you can um, see some of these dishes in Jane Austen's novels and uh, and I think that's such a fun and curious thing so it comes with um, some essays explaining about the context of this and about 
Martha Lloyd's life, um, but also, yeah, reproduces the actual manuscript of her cookbook and all of these weird and odd recipes they have, um, but also gives um, the actual like text um, reproductions of the book, so you don't have to try to you know decipher this difficult handwriting. And yeah, there. I mean, I love looking through old cookbooks anyway because you can find some really bizarre recipes, some of which sound really nice and others uh, sound not so nice. So there's like a recipe for gingerbread, um, but then there's also a recipe um, to make cabbage pudding. And I can't really imagine that that would be uh, too appetizing. Here's another uh, good sounding one of calves feet jelly. And that's actually using calves feet. Um, hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think this will give a sort of like different interesting fun insight into uh, Jane Austen's books or, or give a sort of context around which she was writing her novels. Another nonfiction book I really like the sound of is Sentient by Jackie Higgins, um, which has an absolutely beautiful cover. And this is all about what animals reveal about our senses. So it uh, gives the story of a number of different animals and how they might have different sensory experiences of the world than what we do. So they have a more keen sense of smell or, or taste or hearing. And so it focuses on a number of different of uh, these. And, and I love how um, there's an illustration of the animal at the beginning of each chapter. So here's the peacock mantis shrimp and, uh, and talking about our sense of color or um, the, the spook fish and our dark vision. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's, um, it's a really lovely produced book. But, uh, but also, yeah, I find it so fascinating thinking about how animals really perceive the world differently from how we do and, and, uh, and what that says about the experience of the world and, and consciousness and, yeah, and how we perceive things. And, and uh, so I think that's really interesting to, to think about. Another really beautifully produced book is The Heating by Rob Cohen. Um, the text is by Rob Cohen and then it's illustrated by Nick Hayes. And, uh, and yeah, this, this book is just gorgeous and you can look on the inside cover and it has these beautiful golden um, illustrations and it's illustrated throughout with um, these these beautiful beautiful drawings and uh, so this is the story of the past year in England um, following um, from the when lockdown first happened in the pandemic um, and over the the course of the year and it's sort of telling the different stories of a number of different people over uh, across the country and uh, and then also illustrating their stories with these um, these beautiful drawings and so yeah it's this really um, meditative look at the the past year uh, but uh, also yeah looking not just at humans but at nature itself and how the natural world has changed over the past year and so um, so yeah this um, comes with a big endorsement from Robert McFarlane, um, who writes so beautifully about nature and the natural world. And so um, if you're a fan of his work, um, as I am, then uh, I think you'd really enjoy this book too. Next, I have a couple new novels that are about uh, female characters who have had really difficult, violent pasts and, uh, and who are sort of bent on self-destruction. And so it's telling their, their stories. Um, so the first is a violent Letter Among the Stars by Dulce Maria Cardosa, and it's translated from the Portuguese by Angel Guaria Quintana. And this is the story of a woman that has um, spent a lot of time on the road for her job and has had a number of different horrible experiences um, traveling across the country and, um, and, yeah, and has had a really difficult past and she becomes self-destructive and at the beginning of the novel drives her car uh, off the road and is while she is slowly dying um, she's recalling her past and her, yeah, her, her difficult history. And so it sounds like a story with really serious subject matter but but uh, but it's quite a poignant tale and I find it especially poignant thinking about stories of people that go that spend a lot of time on the road in these road trips and it like 
makes me remember like my time growing up in New England and uh, and in my young adult life. Uh, when you live in New England, you inevitably have to do a lot of driving. And so I spent a lot of time by myself, like on the road driving. And it's this very meditative experience, but also you're passing lots of cars. And so it feels like you're sort of intersecting with a lot of other people's lives and sort of barely touching them, but then not really having a connection with them. And so it sort of sounds like it, it, um, it reproduces that experience and also I think the the cover is quite beautiful in this sort of collage effect and actually I have this another novel that also has this sort of collage effect um, in it so uh, so yeah and then uh, Lisa Tadeo's uh, debut novel Animal um, so I hadn't read her uh, her much acclaimed or or much um, read and talked about book uh, Three Women um, which is a nonfiction book and um, I just hadn't got around to reading that though though there was a lot of debate around it and um, there's been a lot of debate and uh, discussion around this novel as well. Um, some people really like it and some people really don't I think. And uh, so this is a novel about a, a woman that um, it says on the, the cover, I am deprived, I hope you like me. And, uh, and so yeah, it's about a woman with a difficult past and is sort of a California road trip novel. Again, it's sort of about a lot of driving, I think. It, and um, that almost makes me think of like Joan Didion's work, but I think it's, it's more of like a thriller than, than that. And so it's about this woman's past and her tumultuous relationships and trying to overcome that. Next is the novel that I was talking about that also has a collage cover, um, although I have a proof copy of the book, but, but this is what the final edition looks like. And it's Sterling Carrot Gold by Isabel Wadner. So this is a novel about an individual who finds themselves uh, massively persecuted and uh, they don't really know why and you sort of gradually learn over the, the course of the novel uh, why they're being so persecuted. So it's a sort of play on Franz Kafka's novel, The Trial. And uh, I read Isabel Wagner's uh, novel, We Are Made of Diamond Stuff, uh, which I thought was such a fascinating book and the the sort of style of their writing uh, reflects this kind of collage style of, of writing it's um it can be quite uh, quite odd and surreal in places and then other in other ways have this real attachment to the real world and our society and, and issues we're facing and so is approaching all this subject matter of to do with identity and uh, and marginalized people in society um, in a way that you can't really approach in a traditional narrative. Next is a reprint of a Russian novel that was first published in 1930 and this is An Evening with Claire by Gato Gazdanov and it's uh, translated from from the Russian by Brian Karatnik. Uh, <laughs> really tricky with Russian names. Uh, so this is the author um, who's rather handsome and sort of brooding. Uh, so when uh, he was quite young, he was in the, the Russian White Army and fought in the, the Russian Civil War. And he lived is, as an exile in Paris for uh, a long time. And the, the story of this novel, um, so this was his debut novel, and it's the story of two individuals that meet in Paris after being separated for a decade and a romance is kindled between them when um, there was a sort of early promise of a, a romance when they first knew each other and that finally comes into a fulfillment when they, they meet each other again and so it's the um, story of that but also the story of uh, the the man, the male partner um, reflecting back on his time growing up in Russia and the, the trauma of, of that. So yeah, it sounds like a really interesting um, story and I've not heard of this Russian author before although apparently he was quite influential and and I also love um, I mean it's a beautiful uh, cover to it but I love how compact this novel is it's sort of like pocket size and uh, and so yeah I'm really looking forward to diving into this. Holding Her Breath by Amor Ryan this is a novel about a young woman that uh, goes to college for the first time and uh, who has uh, the potential to be a great competitive swimmer um, hence the the cover of this novel uh, but also her grandfather father was a famous poet and uh, he he died um, I think when um, she was still very young or, or before she was born and uh, and finds that a lot of people have reverence 
for his poetry. And so she goes about to find out about his life and the, the story of his life. And so it follows that tale. Uh, so this is a new Irish novel and I'm always really eager to read new Irish writing. An absolutely beautiful new anthology uh, is The Penguin Book of Spanish Short Stories. And it's uh, edited by Margaret Jewel Costa, um, who's a translator and um, who's, I'm, I'm sure I've read some books that uh, she's translated, uh, but yeah, this is uh, such a gorgeous design, this this uh, this sort of impressionistic uh, design on the cover of the novel and then the inside is this like soft blue co color. And uh, so yeah, this is looking at a number of different Spanish, Spanish writers um, from the past century um, all the way uh, back from, I, I think the, the first author um, cited uh, grew up in or, or was born in around the 1880s and then the most recent author uh, was born in the, the 1980s and uh, so yeah following uh, or compiling the stories of all of these different Spanish authors and and I have to say to my shame I don't think I've read any of uh, these authors before uh, but yeah so looking at uh, the history of literature in the, the past century in Spain uh, but also uh, how these stories reflect the changing culture and politics and times of that country. And uh, and so, yeah, I think this will be a wonderful thing to dive into and pick out and read different stories from. And, and I love anthologies like this as a sort of taster of writers that I've not read before. And so if I really enjoy their short story, I can though, then go like seek out some of their books and read more of their writing. And so, you know, it's just a wonderful sort of taster in that way to read anthologies like this. Then I have a couple of memoirs which are quite serious in tone um, but sound really moving. Uh, so first is Will This House Last Forever by Xanthi Barker and uh, this is the story of the, the author's connection or disconnection uh, with her father. So her father left her and her mother uh, when she was still a child and uh, only had a connection through him like really sporadically throughout the years and um, sometimes he would send her these lavish gifts but but not really be there in a in a practical way to support her and her mother and uh, and her father dies and uh, so she is then contemplating their relationship with each other and 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 how she is mourning his loss even though he was never even really a strong presence in her life so is reflecting about that and and our connection or our disconnection with our parents in in that way so it sounds like a really moving story then there's the memoir W3 by Betty Howland and W3 rever refers to a psychiatric ward at a hospital um, that Betty Howland uh, stayed at for a period of time when she was a young mother and found herself beset by uh, mental health issues and uh, and so spent some time in the psych psychiatric ward and uh, so this was first published in the 1970s so this is a reprint of this memoir and there's been a sort of resurgence of Betty Howland's um, work um, so I also have this collection of short stories that she wrote um, called Blue in Chicago and uh, so so yeah um, I, I really think it's interesting when uh, authors have this sort of resurgence and then there's a reprint of, of their books and so it's like a, a new generation rediscovers their work and Betty Howland died only a few years ago I think in like 2017 or around then and uh, so even though this is obviously quite serious subject matter I think it has a sort of lightness of touch to it I've, I've heard that her like descriptions of it have this sort of humorous edge to them while also looking at the the serious side of, of mental illness and um, and this new edition comes with an introduction by Yi Yun Lee um, whose work I, I love and adore and, and seems like the perfect person to introduce a, a memoir with subject matter such as this. Then I have a few uh, books which I think are, are sort of lighter and more comic in tone um, to sort of lightness from this more, these more serious books. Um, so the first is another uh, reprint of a book of a novel that was first published in 1991 and that's Ride a Cock 
Course by Raymond Kennedy, um, which is such an amazing title. And so this is about a woman that works at a bank um, for a number of years and was known as being uh, very like diligent and kindly. But then one morning she wakes up and has a total transformation in personality and becomes much more cavalier. And um, though I think she's in her 40s, um, but she takes as a lover a high school student and uh, and so goes on to live this really like bombastic life and so it's about this complete transformation is meant to be quite comic in tone and uh, and really light-hearted but also looking at this period of history when there is in the financial crash of the 1980s and is sort of a commentary on that as well yours cheerfully by aj pierce and this is sort of a, a sequel to um this author's uh, novel dear mrs bird and follows the same character um named henrietta bird um who were who in the 1940s um, becomes a wartime advice colonist and so is uh, is following her life and her travails and and in this novel she gets sort of drawn into she and her friend get sort of drawn into the war effort and uh, and working in that and so uh, so yeah it's it's meant to be quite light-hearted in tone but is a historical novel obviously looking at a very serious period of history so it gives a sort of different take on that time period no such thing as perfect by Emma Hughes um, so this is a novel about a woman that decides to take a chance on dating apps and um, and finds this new dating app where it's meant to find your absolute perfect partner based on your internet search history and so finds an individual that that seems like it's her perfect partner but then she also finds herself drawn to another person um, who's completely not a personality match for her and so it's about that whole issue of like well do you go with your instinct or do you go with who you should logically be with you know based on this sort of algorithm and and of course it's been there's I think been a lot of articles about how these sort of apps which um, match people up you know based on their interests and and their their history um, aren't necessarily the best at at finding the perfect relationships for us because uh, obviously the way personalities works I mean just because you have all these details in common doesn't mean you're going to be a really good match for each other and and there's been a lot of research about that and so this is a novel that sort of playfully explores that whole issue. Anne-Marie the Beauty by Yasmina Reza and it's translated by Alison L. Strayer and this is a very short novel um, I, I would call it a novella I think it's only around like 50 or so pages long and it's about a woman reflecting on her life and her relationship and how bored she is by her husband um, but also reflecting on her relationship with her very good friend who's a successful actress and so it's sort of meditating on relationships and fame and looking at it from a dynamic point of view and then finally because it is pride month um, I have a very fun uh, looking new book called the Queen's English by Chloe O Davis and this is a dictionary of uh, queer terms um, looking at the LGBTQIA plus uh, phrases and lingo and uh, and so looking at the history of all these different terms and their real meaning and tracing um, their their meaning um, through time and it, it comes with all these illustrations as well and sort of graphs looking at all these different terms and what they mean and uh, and so yeah um, there's there's like a lot of um, it's just sort of like a fun thing to to flip through and and look at the history of all these terms some of which I know and um, some of which I don't know and so are sort of new discoveries for me and um, and sort of the the surprising um, story behind um, some of these different terms so yeah it's quite like a fun thing to, to look at so those are all the new books I'm talking about uh, let, let me know if you've read any of these uh, in the comments below um, or if you're really interested in any of these books that I've been talking about um, let me know about that too and we can have a chat about it so I hope you have a very good day and I will speak to you again soon bye bye